when game developers try to create a new game, especially in a populated genre, they will definitely try to add their own spin to it. Maybe have interesting characters or a crazy story. Perhaps it's gonna synthesize itself with another genre so it has new and exciting mechanics to play with. Unfortunately, those same developers, sometimes they get so caught up in making these new zany spins on their RPG or whatever game that they forget to make the game actually good, to make the game be interesting for those who will play it. In essence, they're just exchanging style for substance. Airship Syndicate shows that they were aware of this issue, and given their body of work as well, Riot said, you know what, take this League of Legends universe, put it in an RPG box, and show us what you got. And they did. The resulting product of that endeavor would be the Ruin King, a League of Legends story, which I will call Ruin King from here on. Instead of trying to include as many things as they can to feature in their game, they just decided to stick to two regions, which is going to be Bilgewater and Shadow Isles. And within that story, you get to play with six champions. By limiting this scope, they're able to really bring to life and explore these two regions as well as have great interactions and characterizations for their champions. So, you know, sometimes less is more, and I believe that this is the case in this one. So, let me tell you what this isometric adventure is like in detail. How it plays out, how it looks, how it sounds, and what exactly there is to go through. Let's have at it. Ruin King, how does it look? Uh, not too impressive, to be honest. I'm willing to give it concessions on that end, considering that it's just running on a Switch. I played it on the Switch, not exactly having a 3080 or whatever in there, uh, not a supercomputer. You're not gonna expect high-tech graphics. But what they do have is aesthetics. They're able to make this color palette that's not too colorful, not too distracting. And the towns, they're quite populated. They have enough people walking around them. There's enough places to explore. And the variance of who you're dealing with does bring it to life quite well. So despite the hardware limitations, it's passable. You're gonna, it's gonna be okay to view things. The models look kind of basic, kind of low poly. And I can understand that considering the size of these maps. And some sometimes the frames do drop, but it doesn't really get in the way all that much. Now, when it gets to battle, the models look much more detailed. They also uh, animate much better. So, in that end, they do kind of make up for it. Except for the UI. Not too hot on the UI. The text, the bars, the how the information is displayed to you. It could have been better, in my opinion. It could have looked a little better. In, it does look like it was developer art. Like you, It's something you'd see on a pitch or you'd see on, a, on an alpha or beta test. I think they could have gotten a little more stylized with it. That's what I'm saying. Now, the audio side, that's a completely different story. I'd have to say top tier. From voice acting that's also available in several languages, you can bet your ass. I put it on Japanese to see what it's like. I enjoyed it. But I went back to English because I found that English sounded more natural and it just flowed a lot better. I was afraid that staying with me would put you in danger. And it comes with the territory. Yes, I ended up liking the English dub better. That's a, that is a first for me. But the low-key star of the show would have to be the OST, the music for every town or for every place or every situation. They have something from the busting streets of Bilgewater to the ominous alleyways of Shadow Isles. It's a, it's a real treat. There's even the, enough variation in the music for battles. So on certain bosses, you get different kinds of music. And it's nice because it's even if it's turn-based, it's able to give you a sense of tension. So the whoever the composer is, like hats off to you. You really did a great job for this. Listening to the OST while I was writing the review, I enjoyed it. It might go in my playlist to be honest. So how does the game play out? It's actually a pretty standard fair RPG. You have your allies on one end, your enemies on the other end. You take turns on fighting each other until one side wins. What's different here is the three lane system. 
normally you want to cast a spell or a lean ability which is what they call it here you just have to wait until it comes out right now you can adjust the speed by turning it into a faster but weaker spell by putting it in the speed lane or you make it hit harder but take longer by putting it in the power lane by default you're always on the balance lane in the middle and what this does is it helps you adjust your timing on how you want your skills to come out because that will help you become more flexible in how you will react to certain situations in battle you want to avoid a hazard on the timeline you can do that you want to be able to act, to act first you can do that if you want to just be able to make sure that you're gonna take down your enemies on the very next turn you can actually just go to the power lane which does the job most of the time there will also be situations where using the power and speed lane mechanics will be specifically needed to get around certain problems so it does have a bit of a gimmick to it but i do enjoy it because it keeps the combat kind of fresh especially for those more interesting boss battles so for you to know what to use you're gonna have to actually read and inspect text so uh, a certain level of reading comprehension is going to be needed which is a big problem for me because i don't tend to like reading text while i'm playing games but but you know if it's an rpg it's turn-based you're not really going to lose out if you just take a few minutes to figure out what's going on in your fight so just be noted that you do have to read in the middle of battle your champions are going to progress the same way you normally would expect they level up they get an increase in stats now you can also put on equipment and make their stats better and that equipment can also customize by enchanting it with whatever effects you want so long as you have the crafting materials needed you can do it you can give your champions life steal you can give them shields you can give them better uh, turn speed all that stuff there's so many options apart from that when you level up you also gain rune points as well as upgrade points the upgrade points go to your abilities rune points go to your stats in general that's how it works what makes it special is that you can shift around these points so you can adjust how they play out at any point so Braum, generally a tank i can make him either not deal a lot of damage but never really have to deal with taking a lot of damage ever or i can make him less tanky and he deals more damage whenever he gets attacked for misfortune i turned into a dodge tank instead of just a pure attacker and that worked out great for me and for yasio which is every casual's favorite son he is a crit machine and he decided to keep him that way finally each of these characters have gimmicks on the map so they can either throw wind or see special treasure get through walls read ancient texts so you're gonna want to variate your party so that you can fully explore every map because each map has quite the number of secrets to find. Ruin King's content, well, you'll eventually fill up your roster of six characters, or six champions, as I mentioned before, and each of them are unique enough from each other that you can mix and match them and still mostly have a balanced party. Sometimes the rule overlap is way too much, but that's uh, quite rarely the case. They also have different interactions with each other so they can talk to each other at rest points and even in key parts of certain towns, maps, whatever. And they'll have these short exchanges that are pretty fun to watch in my opinion. So what's the story? Well, you have a team of friends and you're out to save the world. That sounds pretty standard RPG to me. What you can also do is go on side quests by talking to random NPCs or just looking for the rumor monger that'll make it a lot easier for you. Completing these quests will reward you with normally gold or equipment. Sometimes when going on these quests, you also encounter optional bosses, which are something you find on the bounty board. By defeating these optional bosses, you gain black marks, which is a special currency for a special shop. And you can actually get a lot of interesting stuff from that shop, you know, be able to have better equipment. Sometimes straight up buy rune points or ability points. These side activities are generally pretty engaging. Uh, most of the time you'll be reading text of conversations, so it's not that uh, impressive, but there are ones that have actual skits to them that help you connect more to the world and the characters, and those are the ones that shine. The others, not too exciting, but they're worth doing. Finally, there is fishing. Whew. And every good RPG has a fishing minigame, and this one has a fishing minigame, so it's probably a good RPG. 
it's actually quite rewarding to do it. There's so much you can get out of it. So I do it every time I find a chance. And I recommend that you do. Right, features. Okay, there's uh, something that ruined Ruin King for me, and it's the bugs. Uh, in a play session of maybe three hours, I would crash maybe four times. Four times, five times. I have to hard restart the game. It takes a while to get back to the game. The saving grace is that the autosave is quite robust. It almost does it almost like every few minutes. So the progress you lose isn't something I'm going to cry about. However, when it crashes a lot or maybe the menu cursor goes missing for some reason when I'm trying to change equipment or sometimes after a battle I can't move, it's super frustrating. Considering that this is in a console environment where I rarely encounter bugs like this, like game-breaking bugs where I actually have to restart the game, uh, that's kind of minus points for me. I'm sorry. The game doesn't really have a new game plus or anything that I would consider extra. They do have a bunch of lore content if you're willing to read it, and we already know my opinion on reading during playing video games, so not exactly a plus for me, but it's there if you want it. So in conclusion, Ruin King, a League of Legends story, very classic formula of RPG, it is well put together. It actually finishes pretty cut and dry, it's a nicely tied up package. It has a decent ending, it leaves you enough to believe that there could be continuations later on. But what I do find is I think the game was made with a lot of restraint. Like, the characters, I don't think they really changed all that much in the course of the story, which is a bit of a shame. Because if I could see something that I don't normally see anywhere else in this game, that would make it pretty wild. I do believe that Riot may have been holding them back. Like, uh, okay, you can do these with, with these characters, but that's as far as you go. And that's also going to be true for the world. And, well, it's a shame. So hopefully when Riot greenlights a new project for a league for the series they do let them go a little more ham let them explore the world a little bit more but I kind of doubt it I do hope it happens I want to see uh, some something wild something more interesting out of this game all right recommend time uh, if you want a nice and easy not too tense RPG experience this is gonna be a good fit for you I played this on normal difficulty, I believe there are harder difficulties out there. It doesn't do anything too fancy, it doesn't really uh, throw you that many curveballs or at all. So for those who are looking for a big twist or uh, something very interesting out of it, you might be disappointed. But it does set out its goals and it goes on to accomplish them. Now you'll finish this in roughly 30 to 35 hours, very easy to drop and pick up at any time. So if you just want that you know, easy going experience, this is going to be a great pickup. Otherwise, you might want to look elsewhere. And finally, the rating. Okay, considering how it looks, and how it sounds, how it plays, and whatever else I dealt with in this game, I'm going to give it a rating of 3.5 over 5. It's decent. It's a decent game. Right, so if you want to try this out, you can find this on PC, you can find this on the Xbox One, the PS4, as well as the Switch. Alright boys, thank you for hanging out with me and going over this review with me. Now if you want to see more of our content, you can see more of it here on the YouTube channel. If you also want to follow us on other social media, we have a Twitter, we have an Instagram, we have a Facebook. And finally, if you want to see everything, you're going to find it on Raymarufaz.com. That's it for now, I hope I did a good job here. And I'll see you guys next time. See ya.